Good afternoon. These are on, I presume. Um, I'd like to talk to you today. Um, and do I have control of these slides, or is I do? Okay. Let's get through these really quick, because this is just because you have to get CMEs. And I have to tell you that I am on the Speakers Bureau for GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, and also a um, nutritional consultant for an HIV nutritional company named Biosource Therapeutics, which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about today. What I'd like to talk to you about is something that I find thoroughly fascinating. It is glutathione. It is one of the four endogenous antioxidants, and it is one that I must admit, despite 80,000 published articles in the English literature, through medical school, internship, residency, fellowship, and a fairly long time in academic medicine, I knew nothing about. Um, it is a very interesting molecule because it I exists in an accelerated or increased energy state. The energy state is, or increased energy state, is caused by the fact that it's got a free sulfhydryl group and therefore can easily donate the hydrogen to a electron and therefore quench a free radical. Now, let me tell you, because I think it's important and it is a little bit of a divergence, but I learned about glutathione because of something that you probably all have seen in your practice, and that is a low uric acid. Now, when I was in medical school and when I was a professor of oncology, the only thing I knew about uric acid is when you had a kid that you were going to treat for leukemia, you put him on allopurinol to keep the uric acid down. I knew nothing about uric acid being low, except it kept appearing, and it appeared in about 20% of my patients, and that just didn't make sense. So I finally went into PubMed, and after stumbling around for a long time, I found out that uric acid is the last antioxidant your body uses when it's run out of everything else. When it's run out of gas, okay, it uses uric acid. Hmm, interesting. So if that's the, the last, the question then, what was the first? And that is where I got into glutathione. I've been coming to some of these meetings for a while, and, and glutathione is very important for a number of things, not all of which I'm going to go into today. But in point of fact, it, it, it has a great deal to do with not only well-being, okay, but aging well, or if you will, retarding the aging process. So I think it's very applicable. I'd like to, at the risk of repeating things that you already know, go over some of the things that glutathione is important about. Glut alone in the antioxidant world, okay, every other antioxidant, when it becomes oxidized, becomes itself a free radical. Glutathione doesn't. It actually recycles other antioxidants. In fact, the body considers it so important that up to 6% of the entire ATP expenditure or energy expenditure of the body may be used to synthesize and optimize glutathione levels. That's pretty impressive, 6% of the entire energy output of the body. It is also the only non-enzyme antioxidant that doesn't become a free radical and in fact has a very interesting corollary when it becomes oxidized because what happens is it complexes to another spent glutathione molecule and the compound then becomes GSSG, and GSSG has been shown in animal studies at least to promote and induce delta wave sleep. We all know the importance of that in terms of the aging process, so this, even in its used up form, functions as a very useful product. It not only functions as an antioxidant itself, but alone again in, in the world of antioxidants. It is a, an absolutely essential component of antioxidant enzymes, namely glutathione peroxidase and most importantly the glutathione transferases. And I bring that up because glutathione transferase abnormalities have now been associated with virtually every cancer known to man and probably with a lot more than that. And therefore by promoting the production of glutathione transferases through improving glutathione, we may be doing even more than I'm able to talk about right now. In addition, if that were not enough, let's keep going. It's a chelator. In fact, it's 50% as effective as oral chelation in getting rid of mercury. 
It ha has an effect on other heavy metals, but they're not as pronounced as mercury, and mercury is pretty ubiquitous in our environment, so it kind of comes as a freebie. And it detoxifies organic pollutants, perhaps the best known one of which is the two-carbon fragment that we know as alcohol. And in fact, without glutathione, you ultimately get a hangover because you stop the process at acetaldehyde, which is phase one detox, and that in, in itself is a free radical. And obviously, um, many of us may have felt the effects of that if we didn't have enough glutathione. Now, why is it important in aging? Well, these are old data, and I think they're probably not as robust as they should be, but I'll give you what is available now. Glutathione levels decrease with age. The, the data would suggest it's 1% a year beginning in the 20s. I think that's too little, too late, but that's only my opinion right now. I haven't proved it. There are some very interesting things, though. Age match normals, okay, reveal that anybody at, say, 45 who's had his first heart attack or has asthma or whatever other disease you want to um, um, in, use has a lower glutathione level than somebody of that age who's well. So disease causes decrease in glutathione and an accelerated decrease compared to normals. Glutathione happens to be, and this is perhaps the take-home message, it's the major protector of mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is that DNA within the cells that's in, responsible, if you will, for the electron transport chain that produces every bit of energy in your body. And we know from pathologic data that if you take a biopsy from a 90-year-old and compare it to a biopsy in a 5-year-old, the mitochondrial DNA in the 90-year-old is only 5% normal compared to the 5-year-old. So obviously we destroy our mitochondrial DNA, we destroy our energy, and we age. Um, maintenance of normal mitochondrial DNA is directly correlated, and it's got an R value above 9, 0.9, um, with aging. So the higher your glutathione, the less you age. And I think the most important thing there is centenarians, and I think that's wrong on the slide because even though we did it over and over again, the spell check kept leaving it alone. It's centenarians, not centurions, okay, demonstrate glutathione levels that are similar to a 30 to 50-year-old normal, well person. 